Today we're learning to work with uh, function notation. Uh, here we're going to be working with functions, we're going to be working with function notation and also how we take that forward into graphs. Success criteria for today, uh, know how to use function notation, perform forwards and backwards calculations and also plot points and draw graphs of a function. Thing to remember is that a function is uh, just simply a mathematical rule okay it's just a rule for handling numbers or for handling letters okay let's look at a couple of examples and it'll come out quite uh, quite simple for you this uh, this example i'm going to go through here okay so this is like uh, number machines that you may have done maybe towards the end of your primary school probably but uh, what we have here is we have an input so something going in We've got a function that's happening here, and then this function here, it's we're going to times by 2. So we're timing whatever comes in here by 2, and we're adding 1 onto it. And then what we'll get is we'll get an output that comes out of this number machine, as it was called. Okay, let's do an example here. So if I start off with um, putting 3 in there as an input. If I put 3 in, I'm going to multiply 3 by 2 and get 6. I'm going to add 1 onto that. So that's going to give me 7, 7 as an output. Okay, so if you can see how that works, what we're doing is whatever's in here is what we're going to be applying to the input. And what we'll get is we'll get an output from it. 3 going in, 3 times 2 plus 1 gives us 7. Let's try another one. What if I put uh, 9 in as an input? What do you think we'd get out of that? Yep, so 9 times 2 is going to give us 18. 18 plus 1 is giving us 19, so that should give us 19 out. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so what if we put a letter in? What if I put X in there? Okay, so what we're going to do, remember, is we're going to go for 2 times whatever's there. So it's 2 times X is 2X, isn't it? So 2X, and we're going to put in another 1. We're going to add 1 onto that, so that's 2X plus 1. Okay, so what comes out when you put an x in is 2x plus 1 into this function that's here. Now, we've got a special way of writing that, and it's in function notation. The way we're going to write it is f of x. So you can see an f with, a, uh, with the x in the bracket here. The way that we pronounce that is f of x. Okay, so f of x is equal to... And what we've got here is 2 times whatever's in the input. So it's 2 times whatever's there. So it's 2 times x plus 1 is our function. So that's it written in function notation there. Okay. So that's a function that we have for doubling something that goes in and adding 1 onto it. If I was going to write uh, these two parts here into function notation, the way I would write that would be an f with a 3 here. So this is the first one that we're doing up there. F with a 3, and then what we would do is we'd substitute our 3 in where X is. So instead of X, I'm putting a 3 in there, and I'm going to add 1 on. So remember, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So this is, would be a, as function notation. If I then put in the 9, let's see how 9 would go. So F of 9 is equal to... 2 times 9, plus 1, and from there, what we should get is 18 plus 1, that will give us 19 coming out from that function. Okay. Quite often we're asked to uh, find out what the input is when we substitute in an output. Okay, so why don't we try this one? So what if I have 11 coming out of that number machine there? So it's the same function as here. So it's still f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So what do you think would have gone in there to make that work? Yeah, you're right. It's, it's going to be 5. I'm sure you've worked that out. It's going to be 5. reason why it's 5 is because I've got to do this in the opposite order now. So what I'm doing is I'm going for 11 take away 1, which will give me 10, and 10 divided by 2 will give me 5. So that's one way of working that out there. So remember the function that we're working with is f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 here. Okay, if I substitute in 35 in the, in the output, now if I'm going to go with 35, sometimes the way the question's asked, so the way that question might come along will be, f of a equals 35, find the value of a. 
okay, for this function that's here. So first of all, what I know is that when I use this function, what I get out of it, I get out 35. So what I'm going to say is I've got 35 at this side here, because that's what I'm going to get out of that function. Now, what I've got as a function is two times whatever's in the bracket. It's an A that's in there, so it'll be 2A plus 1 is equal to 35. Okay, so then all I'm going to do is the, the opposite. So I've got 2A and that equals 35. Subtract 1 from it. Okay, and then in my next line, I'm going to divide this here. So that will now be 34. I'll divide that by 2. And what I should get out there will be 17. So A is equal to 17 to make that function work. Okay, so that's 35. That's going to be 17 that's going to go here. This is the type of working that we'd be looking for to, to be able to show our knowledge of the, um, the, the function notation. How about trying another one at the end here? So what if I've got something like 8x plus 1 comes out of that function that's there? Okay, and what I've got to do is I've got to find, so my next question is, I want to find f of a when the output is x plus 1, 8x plus 1. And remember, it's that function up there that we're working with. Right then, so, so let's start this off. I know that 2 times whatever goes in, so 2 times a, 2 times a plus 1 is going to be equal to 8x plus 1. So remember all I'm doing is I'm substituting that value in there, okay? And I'm just using the function that's up here, but substituting a in there instead of x, okay? I'm going to do the opposites again. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take 8x plus 1, and what I'll do is I'll subtract 1 from this side over here, okay? So the 1 minus the 1 makes a 0, so the next line is just going to be 8x, that's going to be 0 divided by 2, which gives me a final answer for this one here, that's going to be 4x. So what I would know then is that 4x goes into here, okay? 4x going in, so 4 time, 4x times 2 would give me 8x plus 1, 8x plus 1. So, so I've worked it backwards. That's, a, that's one of the key skills that we have to, to use in function notation. Right, let's go ahead and we'll try an example. Quick example here. Okay, won't spend too long at this one here. So what I've got is I've got a different function. So this function f of x is equal to x squared plus 3. Okay, what I want to do is to find the values of f of 0, f of 1, 2, f of 3, f of minus 3, minus 2, and f of minus 1. Okay, so I've just listed them all down here, and we'll just go ahead and we'll do the working for that pretty quickly. And what we'll do is we'll graph the output that we get from it. So f of 0, so what I'm looking to do is substitute a 0 in here. So that's going to give me 0 squared plus 3. So that would be 0 plus 3 gives me 3 coming out of there. If I substitute a 1 into here, 1 squared, okay, so 1 squared plus 3, so that would give me 1 plus 3, that should give me 4. If I substitute a 2 in to this um, function, so 2 going in there, right, so and into there, 2 squared plus 3, 2 squared is 4, plus 3 gives me 7. Okay, so I'm building up some values here already. So 3 into there, so that's going to be 3 squared plus 3. So that'll give me 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. I've got uh, minus 3 now, so I want to put in a negative. So if I put in a negative, remember it's the whole negative 3 that I'm going to... The whole negative 3 that I'm going to put to, to the square. Okay, I'm going to square it. So minus 3 times minus 3 is going to give me a positive 9, okay? So that's a positive 9, plus 3 gives me 12, a positive 12. So, uh, negative 2 going in there, so negative 2 squared plus 3, so that's going to give me 4 plus 3 is 7. And finally, a minus 1 going in there, so negative 1 in there, up, negative 1 in there, so that gives me negative 1 squared, plus 3, so that will be 1, plus 3 gives me 4. So what this also gives me here is gives me some coordinates. 
So what I've got here is my x coordinate, because remember that's f of x, x coordinate here, and my y coordinate, or what is really called is the f of x coordinate, okay? The function of x coordinate. So this is my x coordinate that's here, so that's my x coordinate, and this is my f of x coordinate there. And we'll just write them just as normal coordinates, okay? So what I've got is a 0 and 3, I've got 1 and 4, 2 and 7, 3 and 12, minus 3 and 12, minus 2 and 7, and finally, minus 1 and 4. So what that allows me to do is to plot this function that's here uh, as a graphical form. So let's, let's just go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to plot the point 0, 3. So 0 along and 3 up. There's my first point. 1 and 4. 1 and 4 is there. 2 and 7. 2 and 7 would be there. 3 and 12 would be up to here, okay? 3 and 12 up to there. Now on the other side, so the negatives. So I've got negative 1 is minus 1, 4. So there we go. Up to there. Minus 2 and 7 there, and minus 3 and 12, minus 3 and 12, up to there. And what I'll do is I'll just draw that curve, okay? So when you get that, just draw a smooth curve through through the point. So I'm going to start about there. I'm going to go from there right down to there, to the bottom. It's going to turn here. That's a turning point. Back through there, up through that one there. Going to there, and then up to there. So there we go. So there's... Just kind of fill it in a bit. There we go. There's my graph. So this graph here, this uh, this plot uh, is plotted on a Cartesian diagram. So what we have up here, we have this is either your y coordinate or your f of x, and along this way here is your x coordinate. Okay, and the Cartesian plot you can see I've joined them all up, and that forms a quadratic graph, which is something that we'll be moving on to uh, reasonably soon. Okay, so this is how functions generally work. So remember the, the criteria that you need to, to think about here. You need to make sure you know how to use the function notation. You need to know how to perform the forwards calculations and the backwards calculations for, um, for functions. Uh, be able to plot the points, understand where the points come from, and draw the graph of the function. Okay, so hope this has helped you a bit with uh, understanding function notation.